Ever want to play a game where the character is a crow that reaps souls? Well, if you did, that's kind of weird, but I still got the game for you. Death's Door. The premise of it is that you are a crow that works for a service that collects souls. Your unnamed crow is given a contract and enters a magical door to get him to the area where the soul resides for him to collect it. Upon getting the soul, after a boss battle that is, he is attacked and loses the soul, and so is tasked with finding it. However, to locate this snatched soul, he is told by another elderly crow that he must take down three creatures that have got him beyond their prime and have cheated death. Only then can the crow break open a massive door called Death's Door. I heard Death's Door being described as a Souls-like, but I gotta argue with that. I think it has more in common with old school Zelda games. The view is overhead, you collect keys, earn what amounts to be heart pieces and magic pieces to upgrade your meters, cast a small amount of spells, enter dungeons to defeat a boss, just like Zelda games. In regards to comparing it to Souls games, well, you do get an evasive roll, but it cannot break pots. There is also a small upgrade system, using experience gained from collecting loose souls and by killing enemies. Enemies really don't give you a lot of experience though, so you'll need to carefully plot out how your little crow wants to progress in power. Do you want him to have higher range, run faster, have more powerful magic, or swipe his weapon quicker? Those are really the four options, and each can be increased five times. These upgrades are optional, as the game can easily be completed without it, but believe me, they do help. So yeah, Death's Door is an overhead action game, if it wasn't already obvious. After losing the target soul, your crow is taken to a desolate landscape, and where you go from here is up to you. Just like in Zelda games, there are magical upgrades that are required to go further than you are intended to, but for the most part, you are free to explore the land. There aren't a lot of collectibles to find, consisting of small trinkets and the aforementioned hardened magic pieces, which are located inside massive stone statues. Even with these, there are only 8 each, allowing for a maximum of 5 life points and 6 magic points. Again, it may not seem like much, but Death's Door isn't a terribly difficult game. If you do take damage, there are only 2 ways to heal back up. One is to head back to the Crow's headquarters, which simply requires you to find a door to bring you back there. The second is to plant one of the many life seeds that you find laying on the ground. By locating a large green pot, you can place one of the greens inside, and it will grow a plant that will heal you up. These life plants will grow again after a certain amount of times, but you really should try to save them until you really need them. Fortunately, they are often placed before areas that require a bit of combat, so if you are already at full health, you can try to save it for when you are done with the battle, to heal back up before moving on. Most enemies have attack patterns that are easy to distinguish, helping you stay alive. They don't have life meters, but what is interesting is that the enemies will show actual cracks in their body to denote how damaged they are. I like this mechanic, as I feel it's pretty unique. For regular run-of-the-mill enemies, it's like, okay, this is cool, but it is very helpful during the few boss battles. What I also like about this is that you are essentially shattering their body to take the soul jail inside. It's a pretty sweet system if you ask me. Your magic is also very useful at keeping enemies far from striking distance. You might think that with only a few magic points, that you'll have to be careful with how much you use, but it's really not the case here. Striking objects with your sword, whether animate or inanimate, replenishes small portions of your magic bar. After only a few hits, you'll gain enough of your magic points back that you can use it again. I like this system, as it keeps things fair if you want to rely on magic. Even if you don't want to use magic for battle, you'll still need some of the attacks to progress throughout the world. These magical powers are found in the main dungeons. What you must do is hunt down the lost crow souls, which unlock a large door. By entering this door, you'll head back to the crow HQ, although this section will be located in a part of the world that has long since been abandoned and locked down. There's a massive Zelda style chest here, but unsurprisingly, it's a mimic, which eats the little crow. You'll then have to go through a small gauntlet of enemies, and once you defeat all of them, you'll earn the treasure which is a spell. Overall, there are four magic abilities. You start with a bow, which is a fantastic, quick way to attack at range. You'll earn a fireball, which penetrates enemies and lights lamps. A bomb will take out groups of enemies and can destroy crumbling walls and downed columns. Finally, a hookshot will pull you to a nearby post or onk. 
In addition to their base abilities, if you care to explore a bit, these skills can be upgraded further by partaking in hidden battles. The bow can be charged a bit longer to let loose a much more powerful shot. The fireball will ignite enemies to do lingering damage. The hookshot allows you to do a sword slash while moving towards an enemy. And the bomb will no longer damage your crow if you are caught in the blast. It takes a bit of exploration to find these upgrades, but the bonuses are worth it. You might even find these upgrades by accident. Since there is no map, you may have to explore around a bit to find out where you need to go next. And if you want to explore a dungeon again, it seems like only a minimal amount of the enemies respawn, so there isn't much of a threat while you are at that location. It also means that you can't exactly grind out extra souls to make your crow overpowered right from the start. In addition, there is no new game plus option, although there really isn't a need. So picking which upgrades you want is even more important, instead of just throwing experience points at abilities that don't exactly suit your playstyle. The story presentation isn't heavy, with a bit of humor, but for the most part, it's pretty dark. Just like many games like this, I can't get too deep into it without giving stuff away. I'll just say one quote that gives you an idea of what you're up against, because I absolutely love it. What would you do if you knew exactly when you would die? Whoa, that's deep, man. Death's Store isn't a terribly long game, with me clocking in at about 8 hours, and that's with me getting lost a few times and completing the post-game content. But those 8 hours were fully enjoyable. The game has a fantastic aesthetic, an engaging story, solid combat, fair magic, and overall, was just plain fun. From the start when you meet Ball Plart, head of security, you know you're going to be in for a great time. Check this one out, especially if you were a fan of classic Zelda style games. Final score, 6 out of 7. This is Reaper, happy fragging.